in England in 1857 the Irish parents. Tom Clark joined the Irish Republican Brotherhood as a young man and thereafter devoted his life to the liberation of Ireland from British rule. Later Tom Clark would stand beside Porrick Pierce in front of the GPO during that iconic moment when the proclamation was read aloud for the very first time on the 24th of April 1916. We recently commemorated the 100 year anniversary of the 1916 rising outside the courthouse in the Market Square in a solemn ceremonial event with the citizens of Louth. As we continue to commemorate the centenary of the Easter Rising, we're invited to continue the work of building a republic of which our founders would be proud, to seek to achieve the unfulfilled promises of the past, as we imagine, together, new possibilities for our present and collective future. It is fitting then that we should reflect both in the centenary garden in Undog and here in the train station on Tom Clark's idealism of our freedom to grow and develop as a nation. May I conclude by thanking Ian Rodairn and the Royal Irish Academy for the wonderful work they undertook in securing a specially commissioned portrait of Tom Clark. Thank you very much indeed for having me here. It's a great honour and privilege. And uh, I was here on Thursday for the opening of the Thomas Clark Park. It was great that Clark has been remembered so well. Um, Myself and other relatives who have been engaged in, in events over the last couple of months have been astonished really at the amount of interest and enthusiasm that has been displayed. Um, Tom uh, was, spent 15 years in prison for, after being arrested for dynamite activities and uh, when he came out he went down to Limerick to visit his prison comrade John Daly who had been released before him. Uh, and it was down there that he met Daly's niece Kathleen and they fell in love. Uh, her mother was not at all happy about this because Tom was 20 years older than she, so he was in his 40s and looking very aged by imprisonment. But Kathleen was a very strong-minded woman and carried her point, and they were married in 1901 in New York. Um, after several happy years in New York, Tom became restless. He realised that there was possibility of war in Europe and that Britain might be vulnerable to attack. Uh, so in 1907 they came back and settled in Dublin, where he immediately began picking up the reins of the old IRB and introducing new and younger and enthusiastic members to it. Tom, there's no doubt, was one of the, found, the, the, the moving forces behind the rising uh, with Sean McDermott, but because he was always a very backroom person, always kept in, the, in, the, in, in the, the back and preferred not to be a public figure. He chose other people to be public figures, such as Patrick Pierce. Uh, so over the, the years, he has been forgotten in many ways, or overlooked, uh, aside next to more charismatic leaders uh, but I think it is only the last few years that the real party has played has become known uh, and I think it's great that places like Dundalk are really pushing to, to get his name forward um, and we should go forward from here because there's an interest in the, the, that this period now that I think is only going to grow and develop. Thank you very much indeed for this opportunity I'm delighted to see you all here. Thank you. It's, it's great to have the commemoration here today and I'm delighted for it. Just before we finish up, there's not much more I can say. I'd just like to thank a few people um, on behalf of ourselves here in the station. It's nice to get the publicity every so often and after a great year. It's been a hell of a year for Dundalk in general. I mean, the town winning the league and cups and everything and the best train station in Ireland as well. Uh, <laughs> It's been a, a great deal on behalf of myself here at the train station and the staff who take great pride in what they do around the place. You know, it's a, it's a long established thing around the train station here for years. You know, Brendan started it a good few years ago, as I said, and uh, has continued on and on and difficult times and not much money about. We still have fellas to get the sweeping rush out. Might be shy and add to them, but they still do the work and it looks good and the station has always been looking well. I'd just like to say on behalf of ourselves, I'd like to thank Rita Butterley. Chayton Creek and, and Barry Kenny from Corporate Communications on put, structuring all this for us and as I say this commemoration has continued throughout the state uh, throughout the country in different stations and we're just one of the ones today I think Drogheda is after dinner and so on and so forth. Uh, the catering staff who's here up above there's tea and coffee and a few treats there for you. The Dundalk Heritage Society, Brendan and Des, Des Casey and the guys there. Now County Council Tidy Towns Committee um, and can hear Peter Savage and all his, his, his men. Um, for Helen Nitton to give up her time for coming to see us, it was great like, to have someone connected to Thomas J. Clark. Um, to Ruth Hegarty from the Royal Irish Academy and all the guys who've done the book and stuff. And 
for the, all the politicians and dignitaries from Tribe Loud County Council and everywhere else. It's great to see you all here, guys. And from my father there who played Howard Hotel V, give him a round of applause, another mean man in the